Hi there, today we're unboxing a NAS server. So this particular one is by Terramaster. It's the F4421. It's the four bay NAS. Details in the description below for anyone thinking of purchasing. So let's take a quick look at the packaging. So it comes in a medium size plain box, got some branding on the top and a carry handle as well. If I turn around here to the side, more branding and we've got data storage master and it's got the same on the other sides as well, as you can see. Bottom doesn't have anything, it's just plain. So let's open it up and see what you get in the packaging. Okay, so I've laid out everything you get in the packaging, so let me quickly go through them one by one. So you get two cables to connect to the actual power adapter, which is here. Cable length is approximately 1.2 meters. Build quality of the cable seems fine. One is for the UK, another one's for abroad. The UK one actually comes with a fuse in there as well, so it's a UK standard plug, and cable quality seems good on both the actual cables. Okay, next the power adapter so the length of cable you get on this is 90 centimeters build quality is very good nice thick chunky cable on there and even on the actual dc connector nice and chunky connector on there okay just come in close to give you an idea of dc output so 12 volts 2.5 amps and again build quality of this Seems good, nice strong plastic. Okay, then you've got a ethernet cable, cat six, connectors are good, and the cable is nice and chunky, really, really good quality. And this is approximately 1.2 to 1.3 centimeters in length. Okay, next you've got some screws. So two bags for obviously installation of the hard disk. Okay, and quite a, a good number of screws. Obviously it does have four discs uh, possibility, so obviously they've given sufficient screws for that. Okay, then you've got some replacement rubber pads for underneath the actual NAS server. So I guess if one comes loose, at least you've got a replacement for that, so it doesn't slide along easily. Okay, next you've got two pieces of paper. One is limited warranty and it's multi-language, and another one is quick start. So if I open that up, that's multi-language as well and it's just telling you to actually if you're going to install this just go to the website and it'll have installation details there so quick installation guide online okay then you've got some stickers and these really are for your own reference purposes so obviously this has four bays you can mark each bay saying this is hard disk one and it's two terabytes in size and you can even write down what you're going to put on there so good reference point because you can forget what's in there Next, you've got a screwdriver, which is a surprise. Normally, you don't get a simple thing like a screwdriver. So nice, it's a complete package. You don't need to buy anything in addition. You're ready to go straight away. Only thing you need is hard disks. Okay, so next, let's take a look at the actual server itself. So let me give you the dimensions very quickly. So about 20 and a half wide. And if I come in here, we're saying about 13. And with the actual rubber pads at the bottom, about 13 and a half and the depth going all the way back here you're saying about 22 and a half ish so build quality you've got metal all the way around you've got some branding on there branding on the other side and if i come around the back you've got two fans for heat dispersion and if I come in close here, you can see HDMI connector. You've got two USB 3 connectors and four LAN connections, each gigabit LAN connections. So very impressive. So DC in, 12 volts here. So you'd connect the power adapter there. And if I come around the front, so let's show there, you've got indicator lights for the four hard disks, a LAN indicator light, a power indicator, and a button to turn it on and off. You've got the four bays here, and if I put it down like so, all you do, just pull up, and the caddy comes out. So let's pull each one out. All plasticky, just to note. Reasonable, I think. Seems quite tough. But you're not regularly going to be pulling these in and out. Once they're in, hopefully 
it should stay in there for a long time. Okay, let me show the inside. Just a brief look. So you can see the actual board, the, um, the hard disks connect to, and the main board for the device is just here. And that's it. And if we look under here, we've got some vents as well and some rubber pads, obviously, to avoid it slipping. So it stays quite firmly in position. So build-wise, very good. And I'm impressed it's got the four LAN connections, each being a gigabit each. So very good. And they can be aggregated as well. So all connected up, giving much faster bandwidth when you're using it. Okay, so let's make a start at setting up this NAS drive. So I've purchased two hard disks to install into this. These are the Western Digital Red Pro NAS drives, six terabytes each. They have an RPM of 7,200 and a buffer of 256 megabytes. Okay, so SATA connection on both those drives. So come sealed in a bag like this and we'll just open the seal. And I've already taken one out already, and there it is. Okay, so let's install this. So pop the top, pull it out, and the way it's installed is straight in like that. The connector down here, as the connector's on this side in there, and if I flip over the drive and we move it slightly, you can actually see the screw holes. So I've taken some screws out already, and let's screw this in. So I'll do this for both the drives. Okay, so now it's installed in position. I can just slide it straight in like so, push it to connect it, and then lock it in position. Okay, let's do the same for the next one. Okay, and that one's done as well. Similar thing as well, just place it in position like so, push it in, and there you go, locked. And as simple as that. So the next thing we'd wanna do is just turn it around and we'll plug in the power. So very simple, DC power adapter there, plug that in and the connector here to enable to plug it into the mains. So push that in and that's it. You just plug it in and then that can be powered on. And then the next thing, obviously, is to make sure you've got your ethernet connector in there. So we'll just use the one that's come with it. We just need one for now, just to show it in action. And simple as that, just push it in. So just two things to connect now. Obviously the plug and the actual ethernet. Then we can just plug it into a monitor and see if anything appears on the screen. Okay, so I've plugged in the NAS server and even connected a HDMI cable to it so we can see what appears on the console. So now I'll power it up, press the button there. You can hear the disc spinning up. You can see four red lights appear at the side here and a LAN light come on and it's flashing as well. So if we now go to our console, Okay, let's give it a moment. As the OS boots up now. There you go, it's booting up. Okay, so it's got an IP address and if I point on the screen, you should be able to see it. So just here, so 0.99, so 192.168.0.99. So from the console, you can find out what IP address has been assigned. Obviously, if you plug in all the ethernet connections, each one will get a separate IP address. Okay, so now I'm at my computer and I've typed the IP address that was assigned to the actual NAS server. And you can just see it up here, 192.168.0.99. And this is what I'm presented with. Initialization, welcome, initialization is starting. 
Only one LAN port is allowed to be connected during initialization and keep this LAN port connected to the internet. Okay, let's click start hard drive checkup so there's the actual drives I've put in so six terabytes and six terabytes and both are given a good status let's click next it says initialization auto download and install TOS system recommended and the other option is manually download and install TOS system okay let's go with the auto download okay data on hard disk one and two will be deleted are you sure you want to continue let's click OK Okay, and it's saying the system will be ready in 10 minutes. Do not cut power or refresh the page during the process. So there you go, it's going quite quick at the moment. So this is just the download phase. Okay, so the OS seems to have installed. Now it's asking for me to confirm a password. So let me type that in and together with a time zone. So let me pick my time zone as well. Okay, so I've entered in a password. Let's click next. And initialization, it's saying hard disk one, hard disk two, and it's been configured to RAID one. So there are the other options available on there. So single disk, RAID zero, and JBOD. Okay, so I want mirroring on this, so let's just go for that. Okay, and this operation will delete data on the hard drives. Are you sure you want to continue? Okay to that. Okay, so it's formatting the drives. Okay, don't want to save the password. Let's continue. Okay, so it's started up now, and let me type in the username and password. And there you go, up and running in around seven minutes. So that's pretty quick. Okay, so now we have the OS installed and we're logged into the system via a web browser. Let me go through what we have available on there. So on the right hand side, we have a dashboard here, device name, we've got the actual operating system version, boot time, and we've got some networking details. So LAN one's connected, there's the IP address. Here's the internet facing IP address, speed, storage and resources. So basic details on there. And if I double click file manager, so two shares by default created, one's called public, the other one's called app data, both empty and you can create new folders within there just like a standard file manager and if I go to applications so there are other applications you can add on there and I'll just quickly scroll down so it gives you an idea so pretty good you can put on additional things so quite interesting here multimedia server mail server MySQL server Let's keep going Apache Tomcat iTunes server Plex media server Dropbox sync Okay, right, next, you've got a recycle bin. If I go to control panel, okay, so let's go through the options here. So user, so you can see admin, you can create other users as well and set quotas on them. So if I click admin, edit, you can add them to other groups, permissions on the shares, so you can say deny or read only access and you can set a storage quota okay user group so there are the groups that are currently there shared folder so these are the two folders at the moment you can create one which is quite straightforward so if I just create docs for example location volume one as there's only one volume okay and do you want it hidden so hide it so it's no and encrypt this folder so encrypt this shared folder recycle bin so you can enable a recycle bin with retention of 10 20 30 or 60 days very good actually next to that set permissions by user and we'll we 
we'll just leave it as full permission. So read only, read racks and deny. So just read write needs to be ticked. Okay, and create. Let's give it a moment. And there you go, docs is created now. Okay, next let's move on to network services, network and device names here, port, network interface. So you can see only one LAN's connected. You can create a bond. So can be connected to two different routers or switches. Okay, you can provide fault tolerance as well. And let me come out of there. And if I click here, there you go. There's the details of it and the MAC address. So saying it's connected on a giganet, gigabit connection. Okay, Wi-Fi, there's no USB adapter and currently only USB Wi-Fi adapter supplied by Terramask is supported. Okay, so it's good to know that. Okay, file service, okay, enable Windows file service Samba. So work group name, work group, Mac file service, that's enabled. FDP file services enable, NPS file services enabled as well. Okay, Telnet as an SNMP. Okay, so you can Telnet to it. Now SSH access. Okay, SNMP. Okay, web server. So you can enable web server on there. Virtual host. Create, create host name root folder okay so you can create a virtual host on there discovery service okay let's move on storage manager I scroll down okay hard drive so one's in a good state the other one's in a testing state let's pop down okay and bad block scan so you can do a bad block scan on those disk smart Give it a moment. Okay, no abnormalities are detected on hard drive. Pick the other one. Okay, that's still in testing mode. And there's some details there. Okay, so raid wise, let's click on that. Okay, it's saying it's good. And that's how much space we have available. So obviously, I've put in two six terabyte drives and that's how much you end up with so five and a half terabytes okay if i click it i can delete it but we'll just leave it as is iSCSI target okay set up ice iSCSI target list virtual disk okay can create a virtual disk as well external storage okay nothing's connected at the moment hot spare set up okay you can have a hot spare if you wanted so obviously there are additional drive bays general setting sorry general settings so you've got region and language okay you can change these if you wanted hardware and power okay so fan working mode smart fan automatically adjusts this fan speed according to the device temperature okay it's good to have it on that and hard drive sleep so enable hard drive sleep function yeah definitely going to do that don't want it just spinning aimlessly okay next is notifications so you can set up to receive email alerts on this so you can just put your email address in there snmp server default snmtp server sorry okay so security ssl certificate firewall account safety enable automatic block block the IP address after too many logon attempts okay interesting you could do that update and recovery so you can check online for new versions of the OS backup and restore restore to factory defaults okay system information let's click on that hardware information details there oh let me click back on there did appear after a few seconds and there you go so CPU usage 
CPU temperature, device temperature, disk temperature, nothing's displayed for that one, fan speed, total memory and used memory. Okay, service status, okay, resource monitor, okay that's pretty cool. So CPU tells you the usage of each one and if I expand it out a little bit see hopefully more there you go the four CPU cores in this okay memory still trying to draw it let's move on okay storage here bandwidth okay you can see the actual usage on each port process and finally system logs there you go just tell you tells you what's going been going on. Okay, next we'll move on to backup. Okay, and you've got data backup, R sync server. So if you enable that, after enabling R sync, uh, the TNAS can be remote synchronization server that allows other devices to back up data to TNAS. Okay, cool. R sync backup. Okay, so you can just create a task for that. Time machine. Okay, so that must be to do with backup as well. Backup to USB. Okay, so you can connect a USB to the device and backup directly to that and backup to TNAS. Okay, and that's that. That's backup. Remote access. So it's possible to remotely access the device as well. I won't go into details of how to set that up. And DDNS there. And you've got help as well available and that's it so pretty straightforward to set up and configure nothing too traumatic time wise only took me about seven minutes really to set it up obviously a lot in there you can install other applications to do other things for you but as a initial impression very simple to set up and configure so there you go hope it's helped anyone thinking of purchasing this particular NAS details are in the description below thanks for viewing and don't forget to like and subscribe